I am very pleased to have with us on the program tonight, Republican from the great state of Texas, Congressman Ted Poe. And, uh, Congressman, thank you so much for your time. Good to talk to you, Cam. It's great having you back, sir. Uh, I understand you were recently in Brownsville, Texas, at a uh, congressional field hearing on border security. That's correct. Yesterday held a hearing on the border and had uh, numerous people who live on the border and work on the border testify about the fact the border is still uh, unsecured. And I understand as well that, uh, I mean, right along with this issue, uh, and I think Fast and Furious is, is in fact, a part of this issue, don't you? Well, of course it is. Uh, The federal government has made a big deal about guns going into Mexico and, of course, blaming uh, gun owners in America for this. Uh, And I brought up the, uh, the issue of Fast and Furious with ICE that was there and asked them uh, about it and wanted to know who in the federal government has been prosecuted for smuggling guns into Mexico and then distribute them and are seeing that they get distributed to the drug cartels, 14 of 1,400 guns still unaccounted for. Um, and it was the old uh, deer in the headlights look from uh, the witness, uh, of course, never gave a straight answer about that. Nobody's been prosecuted in the federal government for uh, this whole operation. You know, and, and i got to tell you, Representative, I mean, we've heard some interesting things uh, just over the past couple of days, new details emerging uh, as part of these uh, uh, recordings that were made, apparently by a guy named Andre Howard, who was running one of the FFLs that was cooperating with the ATF in Phoenix. Uh, and one of the things that we learned yesterday in this conversation, apparently there was a third firearm that was at the scene of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry's murder. Uh, this is a gun that really nobody has heard anything at all about. And in this uh, a conversation that CBS News reported yesterday, an ATF agent by the name of Hope McAllister uh, said that that gun actually came from Texas, which, you know, I, I, raises all kinds of questions about why we haven't heard anything about where this gun came from, what it was doing there at the murder scene, uh, uh, how did it end up in the hands of the cartels, were there Fast and Furious-style tactics being used in the Lone Star State? Uh, are, are you curious about this? Of, yes, uh, uh, of course. Uh, the federal government uh, is blissfully silent about this, obviously hiding, uh, in my opinion, hiding exactly what they did in this whole failed, uh, idiotic idea of smuggling guns into Mexico. Uh, we got the results. Uh, Americans have been killed by those guns. And uh, the more we learn, the worse it gets. Um, and, uh, of course, Congress needs to keep the heat on and have these investigations about it, which we're doing. But, you know, people who uh, uh, need to be held accountable uh, in, in our federal court system as well for this. Uh, and the Justice Department needs to be involved. If we, if we can get them involved in this, uh, they ought to spend a little more time investigating how these guns got to Mexico and who was responsible for it. Maybe spend a little less time investigating the wood that comes from Madagascar that goes into guitars and focus on, on real crime. You know, Wayne LaPierre, the executive vice president and CEO of the NRA, has said that uh, in addition to the congressional hearings and what you all are doing at the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, what Senator Grassley is doing uh, with the Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, that a special investigator, special prosecutor I- is needed. Do you uh, do you agree with that? I do. Uh, I used to be a judge and a prosecutor. And I've never really been a great fan of special prosecutors. When you have a special prosecutor, basically you're saying the prosecution office can't be trusted to do the job. And I think this is a perfect example of why we have to have a special prosecutor. Uh, we can't really depend on the Justice Department, to, in my opinion, to do the right thing. So we do need a special prosecutor to investigate this case. One of the other uh, items that came out earlier today uh, from CBS News in this conversation between uh, ATF agent Hope McAllister and the FFL in Phoenix, Arizona, they were discussing, and this conversation took place back in mid-March of this year, they were discussing Attorney General Eric Holder's uh, first response to Fast and Furious. Uh, At that point, it hadn't happened, and the ATF agent referred to Dennis Burke, then the U.S. attorney in Arizona, saying that uh, he had sent some material uh, uh, to the attorney general's office. Uh, let me give you the quote. I've seen a rough copy, at least, of what our U.S. attorney here has sent up. Whether or not he has the, uh, I believe the uh, South Texas word might be cojones, uh, to actually use it or not, I doubt it, but I mean it's pretty aggressive. Um, I mean, the way I see it, our local U.S. attorney is extremely aggressive. When he gets to D.C., it's a black hole. 
that would indicate to me, Congressman, that that you know, back in in early March, the Attorney General was in communication about the Fast and Furious operations so that he could uh, mount you know a public relations initiative, in essence. Uh, that's exactly the way it comes across. Uh, the Attorney General um, doesn't either doesn't pay attention to what uh, uh, his uh, attorneys throughout the country are saying. Uh, or doesn't understand uh, uh, the real world. Uh, he, he either he comes across as incompetent or making a political decision on this whole thing. And uh, it's unfortunate uh, that the number one law enforcement officer, the attorney general in the country, uh, has no credibility. And this is another example of how he has no credibility uh, because he's not uh, being straightforward and candid about this whole operation. You know, I know that uh, when the uh, House Oversight and Government Reform Committee left off at his last hearing in late June, uh, it seemed like when Congress came back from its recess and, and the uh, next hearings were held, there'd be a lot of uh, questions about the three members of the National Security Council who were apparently aware of uh, and briefed to at least some extent on Operation Fast and Furious. But now again, this whole other channel has opened up back to DOJ, uh, back to uh, ATF, does this ever just – does the information ever just get overwhelming, Congressman? There is a lot of information, and we need to uh, go through the information piece by piece uh, and, and figure out exactly the chain of the information and who knew what and who was making these decisions and then the people who made these uh, awful decisions about Fast and Furious – Let's hold them accountable uh, under the law for what they have done. Yeah. And that's what the Justice Department's for. I'm not sure that we can count on the Justice Department to do that. There was a uh, one, one more quick question. I'm just curious if you've heard anything about this. There was an exchange uh, where the FFL in Phoenix asked the ATF agent, uh, said, what is it with the FBI? You've got to put the word out there. Tell the bleeping FBI to shut up. The agent, Hope McAllister, said, uh, uh, FBI's got their own problems. Trust me. If anybody's going to get sued, it's going to be the FBI, in my opinion. Now, we haven't heard a lot about the FBI's involvement in Operation Fast and Furious or Project Gunrunner, but uh, any idea what, what Agent McAllister might have been referring to? I'm not sure. It's only speculation. Um, I, I, would, uh, I would hope that the FBI is not involved in all of this, but uh, it's Congress's responsibility to find out. And let's have these public hearings. Let's find out exactly what took place, what agencies are involved, and then, like I said, hold the people accountable. Can you grade the uh, Obama administration? Can you give them a letter grade on their responsiveness to the uh, House Oversight and Government Reform Committee? <laughs> There's no response. They don't, get a, they don't get a grade because they haven't responded at all. They, they get an eye for incomplete. They try, trying to get information from them. It, to this day, they're still stonewalling. Sure, of course they are. Uh, that's kind of the, the method of the administration. When it doesn't want to talk about something, it doesn't want, doesn't talk about it. Yeah. And uh, it, it, you know, it's uh, it, it, when you when you have this uh, blissful silence on issues like this, you kind of think that there's something there to trying to hide. Well, you know, that thought has crossed my <laughs> mind. Um, what do you make of the what do you make of the fact, Congressman, that there have been all of these lateral moves? Uh, U.S. Attorney Dennis Burke was allowed to resign. Attorney General Eric Holder didn't even mention Fast and Furious, just, you know, gave him a pat on the back, sent him on his merry way. Uh, and yet, you know, the Attorney General says that grave mistakes have been made, but but nobody's, it sounds like nobody's going to get punished, at least if the DOJ has his way. Well, it, uh, punishment uh, uh, is not the issue. It's getting rid of the people who uh, made these decisions out of the administration. And the way to do that, of course, is not fire them. We have forbid we can't fire anybody. Uh, just let them resign. And uh, that seems to be the method. Uh, we'll let these people resign that made these decisions, and just we'll, we'll move on down the road. That's uh, kind of the answer. Yeah. Well, listen, Congressman, I appreciate uh, all of the work that uh, you and the other members of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee uh, are doing on this. And, and a question about that uh, hearing in Brownsville. I'm sure that you've had an opportunity to talk to uh, some of your constituents. Are they aware of Fast and Furious? Uh, do they, uh, you know, do they know what this scandal is all about? Yes. Uh, uh, the people I represent in Texas, they're, um, they keep up with things like this. And Fast and Furious is a, uh, something that they're very aware of. And they're, uh, they're, they're in a dismay uh, that the federal government is uh, involved in all of the the whole concept of 
uh, uh, shipping guns down to the cartels uh, and letting them uh, and trying then trying to track them. So yeah, people in Texas are aware of this and. They're, they're mad just like a lot of other people are. All right. Well, Congressman, thank you again for your time tonight, sir. Really appreciate it and look forward to doing this again soon. Always good to talk to you, Cam. You too, sir. Congressman Ted Poe from the great state of Texas joining us here tonight.